Greetings everyone, this is Kentaro Kando of the Bajin 13K and I have excellent news, I'll be making more stuff for YouTube or which will be posted on YouTube more precisely in 2016 and some of them may just be these type of things which are more like podcasts because what I'm doing now is I'm just recording the audio I'm just going to slap a video on it and put it up but um, most of them should actually be gameplay so that would be a, a lot more interesting and hopefully I'll also be doing some tutorials getting towards the second half of 2016 where I'm more going into programming and stuff now for people who um, have known me for a long time like before YouTube um, they may be surprised probably that I never really put many tutorials on YouTube but you really shouldn't because Educational stuff is always expensive because it's always rare. For every like thousand, one thousand people, there may be like two or three people in that thousand who really are interested in something educational. Most people are simply interested in entertainment and not necessarily um, high quality entertainment. You can get people who are very interested in low quality entertainment because entertainment is partly provided by the customer and if you can look at a box and find it funny or find it entertaining, then so be it. I mean, look at museums, for example. People go and just stare at static pictures and, you know, they find that entertaining. Most people were are actually willing to pay to watch static pictures hung on a wall in a museum. So if you think about that, um, it really is on the customer what they find entertaining. And... So entertainment and education are two separate things altogether. And schooling is something that may overlap slightly with education, but only by accident. Schooling is actually intended to prepare you for prison, and prison is intended to prepare you for an early death. So by extension, schooling actually is there to prepare you for an early death. It's not intended to actually make you into a better person. Education is, but um, few people can actually afford education because formal education is very rare still. There are plenty of schools, but not very many educational institutions. Of course, there are many that use the name in vain. Um, and there are very few places where you can go to actually develop yourself and be guaranteed that, you're, that time is going to be worth the well that you spend. Of course, if you set up a development program for yourself, um, the timeline may be not something that you can control, but you can guarantee that you will develop if you set your goal as self-development. So that's basically what most people have done. And um, some people who happen to interact well with the business world will um, tend to also benefit financially from it. But um, everyone who does this will benefit in every level, including financially. Um, the most important level that you benefit from, however, is um, mentally and spiritually. By spiritually, there are many aspects of spirituality, but the four which I want to talk about are vigor, vitality, intelligence, and virtue. So the three V's and the I. Um, however, I'm not going to get into that in this video, but I will get into it in future videos. I'm just letting you know that I'll be back. And I'll be talking about um, these sort of so-called high-level concepts. And we can get high together, get high in concepts, that is, not high as in out of control. Because I find language to me is really weird because people say that they're getting high when they're actually getting low. They're getting less in control and less powerful when they get high. I mean, you see somebody who's high on even drugs, high on like, I said drugs, I meant to say high on alcohol, you know, a common drug, high on, but could be high on weed as well, and they're walking up to like a, a little step that's only about like a foot high or something, something that normally they wouldn't even pause, they just step up it or walk across it if it's like a chasm that's only a foot wide, but now they're quote unquote high, and they pause and they're going like, wow, I don't know if I can make this, that's such a big ditch. I mean, you know, the same type of feeling that you might have if, like, you were traveling to another universe and you came back and then you had to relearn how to operate your body and now you can't operate it properly because you've been, you've been, so, not that like you've been really out of your body, but you've been focused on operating another body remotely. 
you know, it's like, um, well, I guess you guys don't really necessarily pirate, um, pilot mechanical vehicles at a distance. But I mean, like in the movie Avatar, you know, how, like, like for example, that guy in the wheelchair used to operate his avatar. Then when he came back, um, they didn't really show you having to, him having to adjust to it. But, um, obviously he couldn't walk normally. He was in the wheelchair. So that was, um, one way in which he had to adjust. But in terms of like being in your physical body and going to sleep and waking up, when you wake up, you don't necessarily wake up fully immediately. It takes special training and perhaps also some type of um, herbs or other assistant things to wake up. A lot of people like to use coffee, for example, to wake up in the morning. I like to use about um, half a gallon of water. Um, not You don't drink it all one time, but you know, for a few hours. Um, all right, so... Yeah, over two or three hours drinking half a gallon of water isn't difficult because a half gallon is only like two liters if I do my approximations correctly. Could be wrong about that. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that, you know, um, it takes a process to wake up your body. And a lot of people seem to forget about this and sort of like use a shortcut which dulls their senses so they don't realize that they're still asleep. So some people use alcohol, some people use other drugs, some people use a routine to actually dull themselves and make them ignore the fact that they're still asleep. That's what most people do that are fortunate or unfortunate enough to have a, a set place in society. You know, you wake up, you go to work, you come back home and in between there you've acted, you've reacted and responded, but you haven't necessarily grown or developed. You haven't necessarily um, then anything that's going to advance you has said maybe advance your bank account but if you consider um, how expensive it is to recover from um, stupidity then you have to wonder really if um, necessarily fitting directly into society is the best thing that you can do it all depends though on circumstances and stuff I mean I'm somebody who appears to fit into society so in many ways so it's not like I'm advocating anarchy like um that fella SM or whoever or it's not like I'm advocating um jumping out of your body and going traveling on the astral plane forever like how um some people advocate um no because your a body is very expensive if you think about it by the time you're aware that you have a body you've already had it for a few years I mean years you've been in a body and you never notice I mean, when's the first time you can really remember realizing that you are inside your body or having a concept of, I, I have a body that actually took years to learn how to walk, years to learn how to talk, etc. You may reflect on this if you try to learn a new language or if you try to learn a new movement style. For example, if you try to learn a dance style or you try to learn sports, a sport that you've never played before, you try to learn, um, say, a martial art or if you try to learn calligraphy, anything that requires you to use your body in a way that you're not accustomed to, you will tend to realize, hey, you know, um, there are things that other people can do and I can't, even though we have approximately the same body. It's not like in the example I used before where there's something wrong with your body where you're missing a, f a, f a facility, you know, where like you're in a wheelchair or something like that. It's just that you haven't developed that ability. So, I mean, obviously, yes, there may be people listening to us who are in a wheelchair. So, I'm just, I'm not trying to make you feel bad or anything. I'm just saying that even if you have the same facilities as somebody else, that doesn't mean you have the same ability because you have to learn it. And, but you actually have to relearn using your body every day. Um, with training and so on, you can reduce this time. And if you're limiting your range of motion, you don't even notice it that your range of motion is limited or that you're not fully awake. And you can go through not just days, you can go through years without being fully awake, without ever, for example, trying to learn something that you never learned before, whether it be physically moving or whether it be intellectually, for example, learning a new language, learning a different style of writing, um, learning some topic which you were never exposed to during your time of schooling or non-schooling or whatnot. Fortunately, there are a lot of ways to do this which only require you to take initiative and take time. And in this area of underemployment and unemployment, it's even easier because you have quote unquote free time. In other words, you have time that is not contracted out. So you can use some of that time to 
use facilities such as public libraries and so on in order to learn new things. You can even use these um, structured semi-schooling courses in online in order to learn things. Um, so I'm going to share some of what I've learned, but I'm really, again, doing this as a hobby rather than as a profession. So um, even though I may do like for sale videos and put them on other platforms, they may be Vimeo, um, I'm not going to try to make money off of my YouTube channel. I'm just going to be doing it as a hobby. And in you know, reviewing a lot of the older videos that were experiments and stuff, I don't think I'll delete them so much, but I think I'm going to reorganize a lot of things to make it easier to find the stuff that's worth watching. And um, the stuff that isn't worth watching, I'm still going to leave there. It's because um, it may not be worth watching for me, but um, sometimes it's good to remember that not all experiments are successful. Some of them teach you things by not being successful. I was watching one of them recently and I didn't realize how horrible it was. So obviously I was um, really stressed out and didn't preview it before I uploaded it and whatnot. And I think that's been generally a theme for me that I really wanted to do things, but I was um, putting too much pressure on myself. But it was also under a lot of pressure which I couldn't change at the time. But you know, over time you keep chipping away at these mountains and eventually you're trickle of water you know breaks a path for you um however it would have been better if the monk tanks were not there in the first place i'm not somebody who believes that there is a value to suffering um the only thing that suffering tells you is that the world is unfair and that it needs to be improved upon so not so much that something is wrong with the world but more that the world is open to improvement because being wrong suggests that there is an ideal world and in terms of physicality so society and so on i don't believe that it's useful to think in ideals i think that's an extremely oversimplified view of things to say that there's an ideal that we can achieve instead i would think that improvements are always possible and experiments are always possible and as especially as long as you're not causing um great harm to anyone i think you should experiment and you should improve and you should attempt to improve um, we should also be very respectful of other people's borders, boundaries, and so forth. Um, you can simply ask a question rather than trying to impose your will directly upon them. And one of the problems nowadays is that many people are trying to impose their will directly on others through force. But it's something that happens on every scale and is actually modeled in a lot of popular entertainment, which is um, one of the reasons why I don't really like popular entertainment. And one of the reasons why I got into anime, which wherein people tend to be a lot more respectful of each other. And even when people trespass on each other's property, they're very aware of what they're doing. And they're, you know, aware that they're risking their life doing it. On the other hand, in the Western world, in um, Hollywood productions, um, it seems to be always a might makes right type of thing. There are really no good guys in Hollywood action movies. There are only bad guys and badder guys. And um, I don't like that. I think that um, the ability to actually converse and come to agreements and negotiate terms is very important. And that may not be something that's in explicit in a lot of entertainment things. Um, I guess the closest one might have been things like The Apprentice and so on where people are pitching products or whatever. Um, but it's something that's very vital in life. And I think that right now we're creating a society where people are totally incapable of having conversations where they negotiate anything. You want to get people who can basically shout at each other and um, try to or manipulate each other. But actually having a conversation, actually sitting across a table, having a negotiation, hammering out an agreement and then living by that agreement. That seems to be something that is only practiced by the elites. And the elites are not necessarily people of money, they're people of education. So, but they obviously will become people of his, with money because a fool and his gold are quickly parted. But even people who are wise and have money don't necessarily retain it because, you know, somebody with something like a unfair economic system can, can take it away or something like that. So money is not a good indicator of education or intelligence or capability. It's also a transient measure in terms of fiscal money. Um, time control is a better indicator of education. 
And one way of looking at time control is when people promise things, whether they give them or not. So that's one of the reasons why, you know, people tend to dislike politicians, because politicians tend to promise, but may not always tend to give. But it all always depends on the politician, and it depends on the system, and so forth. So now, um, having said all of that, I've basically ranted on for quite some time, but I'll be doing much more of this in the future. And like I said, YouTube isn't really suited to podcasts, and I don't necessarily want to bore you by rambling on randomly about different things. So I'm actually going to plan out topics and edit things down and make them a lot shorter and more planned out than this particular thing that I'm doing here. Um, I just wanted to do this quickly because the year is coming to an end. I want to know what you can prepare for in 2016. And I'll be starting from hopefully the second week of February. There may be a few things before then, but um, the real syllabus, so to speak, our series of um, audio essays will start in the second week of February. And um, besides that, the gameplay things will just be as I can do them. Because right now I'm not getting any time to play games at all, except for a little bit of this guy too. I finally um, started to understand the charm of the item world. And I'm using charm in brackets. Because <laughs> the item world is just like grinding. So it's um, it definitely kills time. But, you know, I don't have time to kill. So, um, But what I've been doing is I've just been using it to sort of explore the Disgaea 2 engine. Because I, have, because I haven't been playing anything in a while, it's helping me to like sort of refresh myself and get accustomed to their way of doing things um, again. And also to look at, you know well other issues so but I'll get into that in future um, audio essays and stuff um, all I can really promise is the audio essays for now therefore I can't really promise video gameplay um, I don't have any capture equipment right now that I can use so I have plenty of stuff that's obsolete and I have nothing that I can use it with excuse me um, and I'm not really eager to invest in more equipment to do that if I don't have the time to do the videos in the first place. Because I don't even have time to play videos on my own. Much less play them, record them, edit them, and upload them. So, um, there we go. And um, like I said, I'm not looking to become a professional video game player either. So, you know, um, there's that. I think it's important to keep things in perspective and to know that a hobby doesn't have to become a profession, nor do you have to look at it as a job or a burden. You need to um, limit yourself in terms of um, which domain you want to operate in. If you want to operate in the private domain and throw things out to the public, or if you want to operate in the public domain, and therefore look at the marketplace and how to adopt it. And some people try to get around this by forming sort of like a cult mentality in their regular customers. And um, that really backfires if your regular customers are, you know, not willing to join your cult. <laughs> so that's another topic altogether, and we'll get into that when we go more into business studies. But anyhow, um, that's it for now. Enjoy the rest of the holidays. I'm recording this on Boxing Day, which is the day after Christmas. So right smart dab in the holidays before all Year's Day, aka New Year's Eve and whatnot. It's um, a national holiday in Barbados. It's a Saturday as well, so it wouldn't be quiet anyway. But um, it's been a really quiet day. It's been good for my productivity because nobody has been bothering me. And um, it's also been very good weather. It's been um, overcast, which I prefer to the um, overly hot days. But I, I love the sun, really. I love to be in the sun. Um, it's just that if it's overly hot, then it means I have to um, use more air conditioning. I didn't even have to use more air conditioning today. So I'm very thankful for that because electricity is very expensive here because we import oil. And it would make sense for me to use solar panels, but those are also expensive. And I'd have to work on an arrangement with, um, yeah, there's a lot of red tape to go through. But anyway, that's another story altogether. And maybe I'll talk about that later. But um, if there's anything you want to know, you can always leave a question and I can use that as the basis of a future video. So, you know, it'll become more interactive again. And other websites, there, um, there's a blog I've been working on on WordPress, bjn13k.wordpress.com, and um, a few other 
experiments I've tried out with, but I will talk about that going on. We'll also talk about the um, the group or behind the page and turning K and so forth. But um, hopefully you'll actually hear the other members talking um, when I can get them in the studio and get them actually recording and so forth. And so I think we're going to have a lot of fun in 2016, um, assuming, you know, the usual blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, I'll see you back second week of February. Again, there'll probably be stuff before then, but that's when things will really get started. All right. And yeah, I just thought about that, but it seems perfectly reasonable. I'm sure I'll remember it. In fact, I'll just write it down, but yeah, so I'll forget and remember it because, you know, routines and stuff. I'm talking to myself. I probably shouldn't talk to myself while the microphone is going. Yeah, I probably should have pressed stop about five minutes ago. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I'll press stop.